Yeah. Last test. Last, last test before the real deal. Good morning. That was before the yeah. exam. Everybody laugh. You know. I'm out. It's me. Out here with these crazies. They got me <laughs> going after a hundred. What am I thinking? I'm not too old for this. I started running when I turned 40, and um, the way that I started running was I was kind of fooling myself. Um, what I mean by that is, um, in high school, I was a pretty decent sprinter, and I thought I was still in great shape, and I told my wife, I said, I'm going to go for a run around the block, which was about maybe a quarter of a mile. I'll stretch it and say it was a half mile. And at the end of the half mile, I remember it well, I ran behind the house, and my neighbors were out, and I was dry heaving and I almost threw up. So that was kind of my wake up call to get started. And went out the next day, it was on a Saturday, it was after my birthday, went out and we bought a treadmill. And I ran my first mile on a treadmill and I ran like a 1340. And I text my buddy at the time and message him, I said, I just ran a 1340 mile. And he said, I can walk a 1340 mile. Which really irked me, but it even motivated me more to start running further. I didn't want to start running but was forced to start running. And at the same time, I had a friend from home call me and say, do you want to get in this 10K run? And I laughed at him and said, no, no way will I do it. But then I thought about it more and I thought about how out of shape I was and I decided to get in the marathon. So I ran a 10K, my first 10K. And from there, I didn't look back. Um, went from a couple of 10Ks to a half marathon. And I ran my first half marathon up at Gambier and I finished it, and on the ride home, I looked at my wife and I said, how do people do double what I just did? And then she tells everyone, three, two or three days later, I signed up for my first marathon, the Columbus Marathon. And it was kind of history from there, and I say it was kind of history, but I enjoyed it so much that I continually wanted more. And I started getting in better shape, and I started getting faster, and there were no more 13-minute miles. All of a sudden, there were 10-minute miles, and I was comfortable running. So. I progressed into another marathon and another marathon. 2013, I ran the Chicago Marathon, which I think was my fifth marathon at the time with my friend. And I noticed that, I say at my age, I'm 49 now, that my bones and my joints just weren't holding up the way that I wanted them to. So we, we ran the Chicago Marathon, came home on a Sunday, I caught him on a Monday and I said, hey, are you interested in doing a trail marathon? There's this run with scissors up in Northeast Ohio that you can run 26.2 miles. So we were already trained up, so we hopped in the car, ran up, and that's what started my running career on the trail. And from there, here I am six, seven days out from running a 100-mile race. I think what makes it better for me, trail running versus marathon running, is that whenever I would do a marathon, it was me and 26.2 miles. And although there were tens of thousands of people just like in Chicago, there was no talking to anyone, there was no one there that cared that you were there. I always tell everyone, if you trip during a marathon, the guy running next to you looks at you and says, I hope you're okay, and they continue on. Whereas in right away with trail running, which you trip a lot, I found out that it's just a different community, social-wise, of people that it's more, they care more about you versus about their run, which doesn't make sense in the running world, but in trail running it does. So that's been my number one takeaway that I've developed this community of people that I consider myself a pretty conservative guy, and yet in the trail running community it's just a full gamut of different people. Um, and that's what I really appreciate and like, that it's just a good mix of people that I didn't find in marathon. You know, it's been six months of training, and here you fast forward six months of training to seven days prior to the start of a 100 mile race. The thing that keeps me going is uh, my family and you know my friends. I think that I've always been a person that, I don't want to say I'm extreme, but I like to challenge myself. I like to push myself, hence the progression from a 10K to a half marathon to a full marathon to a 50k to a 50 miler and now looking at a hundred. A hundred to me is the pinnacle 
of ultra marathon. I mean, it's the, I've got buckles, but it's the buckle that everyone cherishes. As in my short, I say short time, three years of running ultra marathons, it's kind of the, the big piece of hardware to have to kind of put you with, I don't want to say the elite, but to finish 100 is definitely that. Um, so for me, this past six months, I've really focused on the 100 mile race and what it means to get the buckle, but more importantly, my family that stands behind me that supports me. Um, some people know and some people don't that my son was diagnosed with autism five and a half years ago. Um, sorry. <laughs> I still get emotional. Um, you know, five and a half years ago, I think I told you, Jonathan, um, he maybe had 50 utterances at three years old, did make eye contact, and autism is a big thing. And I'll be honest, five and a half years ago, I don't think autism came out of my mouth because I was so naive and ignorant about children that are on the spectrum or children that have different needs. So when we got his diagnosis, it really, really, really lit a fire in me to make a difference, not only for me health-wise and, and physical-wise, but for him and other children that are on the spectrum or that have different needs than you and I. So for me, six months of getting up is pretty easy and it's gonna be easy for me seven days from now to stand at the starting line to say that I'm gonna run 100 miles because it's, it's a different motivation than I've ever had before. Some people that run with me see, I put it on my back that I run for my son who has autism and I run for the other kids who have autism. So. You know, that's my fire, that's my flame that I, as I check off another mark on my shirt, I want to do it for him and I want to do it for my family and I want to do it for, you know, other, other kids with different needs. You know, I guess I would say that the biggest takeaway or the most surprising thing that I found out in this last six months from training for a hundred mile race is that mentally, I am probably as strong as I've ever been versus physically. And although I, I'm in, I feel I'm in great shape physically for a 49-year-old guy that's about to hit 50 in a year, that mentally it's opened up a lot of doors for me. And I've always said with that mentally, mental phase comes the spiritual phase. And it may not be a godly phase, even though I believe there is a God and there is a higher power. But spiritually, inside me, I've become a better person. I've become a better person, more patient, more understanding, more open to other people or other things than I was before. And it sounds weird to say it at 49 that you're just now figuring that out, but I think it's taken something like this to help me figure that out. Whereas I look and I see that there are many different types and colors and personalities of people that I maybe didn't see before because I came from such a small town and now I feel like I'm more open. I guess, you know, people say I'm crazy or they say we're crazy for doing this ultra marathoning thing, but I think until you get on the inside of the ropes, you don't have really an understanding where the concept of 100 miles is a lot of miles, 50 miles is a lot, 30 miles is a lot of miles, 26.2 is a lot. In reality, the way I look at it is that I'm not crazy because the benefits that I get from this, physically, mentally, spiritually, to be out on the trail with other people like myself that are kind of on that same journey, that the miles disappear. So when, when somebody tells me that I'm crazy for running a 100 or I'm crazy for running a 50, I honestly have gone 10 mile strands and not even looked down and noticed that I put 10 miles in or 10 miles on my garment. So I don't think I'm crazy and there's a bunch of other people out there that don't think they're the crazy either. Well seven days out from a hundred mile race you think about it a lot um, and you know you you want to think positive about everything. You know I think my bigger thing is that I've, I've started to watch the weather, I've started to watch the conditions just because of the terrain that we're going to be running in. Um, a little bit of doubt wants to creep in because Reality is I'm doubling the furthest distance I've ever gone before. But then I can kind of reel that back when I start to, to worry because I felt good at the 50 
both in the training run that I did and the race that I finished, that I knew I had more miles in me. So that's my positive that I pulled out of it. Um, I worry a little bit about the physical aspect of it more than the mental. That, you know, my body, that I really haven't been running. In nine years of running both marathons on the pavement and trail running for three years is not a long time to be running. So I worry a little bit about my physical, physical body and where it's going to be at once I go beyond that 50 to the next 50 miles. That's probably my most concern that I have. You know, it goes back to that community of runners that we have. I've got so many people that are in my corner that um, it's pretty amazing. And like I said, if you're outside the ropes, you don't get it, or you don't get to see it. But if you're inside the ropes and you get to meet the people that offer advice, they offer advice like it's nothing. Advice from knowledge from people that have been doing this for years, like a Mark Carroll or a Chad Hill. People that are wise beyond any years in ultra marathoning. Just to tell you, you're going to want to quit. And when it's nighttime, make a deal with yourself. And this is through people that I've talked to that Mark Carroll has said that you just tell yourself, I'm not going to quit until the sun comes up. Tomorrow morning, when the sun comes up Sunday morning, I'm going to quit. And then he says, something magical happens. That when the morning gets there, if you've toughed it out, then you want to continue on and push on. So that's a great piece of advice that I keep saying to myself, get to the morning, because we're practically going to run all day, all night, and into Sunday morning. Um, one of the things that I advice that John Rutherford's given me, Mike Smudge has given me, that Steve Hannes has given me is to not go out too fast. And I definitely don't want to do that. Um, my goal this race is to finish the 100 race. I am not trying to go for a PR because I don't have a PR to go against. Um, you know, slow and steady wins the race. We've heard it over and over again, and that's what I'm getting. If I'm at 31 hours and whatever, I'm fine with it. I get a buckle just the same as the guy that finished in 16 or 18 hours. I'm still getting peace pieces of advice today. Here on my phone, text message today while I'm at Mohican with my family hiking, Steve Hannes messaged me and says, I'm getting emotional thinking about the journey that we're going to have together for 100 miles and really emotional thinking about the finish line. Now if that doesn't fire you up to not only run the 100, but now it's like he's already looking forward to the emotion at the end of 100. I'm going to finish this. I got to finish this race. Hi, my name is Jamie, and I'm exactly one week away from Mohican 100. title of this video is going to be one week and it, it's one week until something that as you said you went from running a mile to now you're going to be running a hundred of them what's the uh <laughs> they just gave me a yeah. chill i want i in my in my in my mind i'm thinking i only want to do a hundred and get that belt, belt buckle and mohican is an awesome race to do it at that's where i started my trail running my first 50K was there at Forget the PR, so why not go back to Crazy Mohican again? But then, man, my heart just says, I don't want to look too far ahead. Maybe I shouldn't look too far ahead. Let's get this one done and then see what I say afterwards. But man, it's a great world. I wish, I wish more people would do it with us. Yeah.